Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutley. Two topics that I spend a lot of time on are pulmonary hypertension and interstitial lung disease. You've heard me say interstitial lung disease a thousand times, but pulmonary hypertension, I've said very few. Today, we're gonna discuss both. Pulmonary hypertension is simply defined as elevated blood pressure in the pulmonary arteries. But a quick reminder, blood is collected in the veins of the body after being delivered to all the organs. The veins send the blood to the right atrium of the heart. Blood then travels through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. The right ventricle then pumps blood through the pulmonary artery, then to the arterioles, then to capillaries, where gas exchange takes place in the lung. Then it goes to the left atrium of the heart, the left ventricle, and then to the rest of the body. Pulmonary hypertension, or pH, is elevated pressure in the pulmonary artery. As you can imagine, there are plenty of reasons to have elevated pressure. When you see this image, you can come up with the reasons. But according to the World Health Organization, there are five types of pulmonary hypertension. There's true PAH, which is truly a pulmonary artery or arterial problem. There's pulmonary hypertension secondary to left heart disease or failure. That makes sense. The heart doesn't pump well, increased pressure behind it. There's pulmonary hypertension due to lung disease or hypoxia. This one's a little harder, but hypoxia or hypoxemia can cause vasoconstriction of the pulmonary artery and arterioles increasing that pressure. Also, depending on specific disease, other factors like endothelial to mesenchymal transition, these are the scarring cells, may contribute to elevated pressure. Group four pulmonary hypertension is due to chronic clots in the pulmonary artery. As you can imagine, obstructing the artery is gonna increase the pressure as well and lead to a failed right heart. Group five pulmonary hypertension is more of a trash can, but it's pulmonary hypertension caused by hematologic disorders, systemic diseases like sarcoidosis, chronic renal failure, and or compression of the vessels. Obviously, I see a lot of pulmonary hypertension due to left heart disease and due to hypoxia or hypoxemia but I wanna focus on group three pulmonary hypertension. Again, group three pulmonary hypertension is secondary to hypoxia or hypoxemia, which induces a bunch of microscopic changes that ultimately lead to increased pressure on the right side of the heart. The other thing to think about is how the lung disease itself can macroscopically lead to pulmonary hypertension. Think about this. Let's look at emphysema, which is dead lung. Remember the lung is a bunch of alveoli, bronchioles, and blood vessels all stacked on top of one another. If you have dead lung, you have less alveoli, but your blood volume hasn't changed. The blood has a backflow and the right heart feels a higher pressure. If you think of interstitial lung disease and more specifically pulmonary fibrosis in the same way, the same thing occurs. Remember, interstitial lung disease is inflammation of the secondary pulmonary lobule, which is a bunch of alveoli collected together. The presence of white blood cells will increase the backflow as well. With fibrosis, you have actual scarring of the alveoli. So again, less tissue for blood to travel through. Even more than that, if you have scarring or inflammation of the lung, would you want blood flowing to that abnormal lung? No. So the lung has developed ways to essentially divert blood flow away from diseased areas of the lung. This may be why vasoconstriction of the blood vessels occurs in the first place. Again, when thinking about pulmonary hypertension secondary to hypoxia or hypoxemia, the individual disease process needs to be considered. What if you continue to have constant exposure, like in the case of smoking or occupational exposure? You have to consider the molecules you're being exposed to. Smoking causes changes in the blood vessels. All of this matters because as you increase the pressure of the blood vessels, the right heart has to pump against the higher pressure, something it's not built for. This leads to thickening of the right ventricle and eventually may lead to right heart failure, which increases your mortality. We'll talk right heart failure another time, but this time, thanks for joining Medicine Deconstructed. I'll see you next time.